I'm going to share five Microsoft Teams features with you that can significantly improve the way that your team collaborate in Microsoft Teams. And the best part about it, all of these features are included in Microsoft 365 as standard. The first Microsoft Teams feature I'm going to talk to you about is approvals. Now let's say that you don't have any kind of system for centrally managing your approvals in the organization. Every time someone's trying to find a historic approval, you're frantically searching through your Teams messages, searching through your emails and trying to find where this was actually approved. So when your boss or CEO says, why did you spend 3000 bucks on an Apple Vision Pro just for research purposes, you can go back and find the approval request that you sent to them while there were a few drinks in at the Christmas party getting this approved. To start a new approvals request, you can either go into a group chat, an individual direct message with somebody, or a Microsoft team. If you go to compose a new message, click on the plus icon at the bottom and click get more apps. And if you don't see approvals at the top there, I can see it right here, but you can just search for it and click on approvals. And you've got a few different options here. Now, if you're using Adobe Sign or DocuSign, you can integrate that with this. Um, but I'm just going to look at the out of the box functionality using a basic request with no third party integrations. So let's click on basic request and we can give this request a name. Um, so I did one earlier. Do you approve the burger? Let's do something a bit different. So Apple Vision Pro and I can either get approval just from one person or if you would like approvals from multiple people, you can add all of them in here. You can have that done in a specific order. So I can toggle this option on to get that in a specific order. So maybe I need the head of IT to approve the Apple Vision Pro first. And then because it's over a certain amount, the CEO or the finance director then has to approve it. But let's just keep this one simple and I'm going to enter my colleague Wesley, who is in this chat, and I can require a response from all recipients. There is only one recipient in this case. So I can set a priority here. So if it's super urgent that I get these Apple Vision Pros, I can set that to important and I can add some more information here. So the Apple Vision Pro costs $3,500. And I need it for research purposes. Probably when I want to put a bit more information in there in this case, or I imagine this particular request might get rejected, but let's hit send. Okay. And there we go. There is my request there. So my colleague Wesley is going to see this pop up. He's going to get a notification um, and he will actually be able to approve that from within Microsoft Teams here. So we can click on view details to view the status of that request. I can follow it up to Chase or I can cancel that if I've changed my mind. Now, let's say you've got tons of different requests all over the place with different people in the business and you want to be able to track them in a central place. The way to do that is on the left hand side, you'll see this view more apps button. You click on that and click on approvals. That will then open your approvals app. You will see at the top here the approval request that you have sent and the status of them, the date and who they were sent to. And you, if you've received an approval request, you will see under received here everything that you've approved. The next thing I want to talk to you about is apps in Microsoft Teams. There is an extensive list of approved integrated apps for third parties and Microsoft within Microsoft Teams that can help your team collaborate more effectively and integrate different systems that you're using. So in Microsoft Teams, on the left hand side, you will see apps. And we can see here on the left hand side, we can filter by different categories or industries. But if I click on popular on Teams to see what a lot of other people are using. So we've got a few of my personal favorites here, such as SharePoint, Forms or Microsoft Planner. Microsoft Planner I use extensively for collaborating in my different teams because it allows you to manage your tasks. We've also got things like workflows and third party systems like Jira. There are so, so many different apps. And also some vendors have Microsoft Teams apps that are not listed in the App Store here. And in those cases, they will give you a file that you can download and upload into Microsoft Teams to create that app 
fairly easily. So it's worth asking if there is an app that you're using that you think would be beneficial to integrate in Microsoft Teams and you don't see it in here. Ask the vendor if they have a Microsoft Teams app. So we can, on the left-hand side, I can search for different apps here. So Halo is my help desk system. And I can see here, this one is built for my organization. So this Halo PSA app was not actually part of the Microsoft Teams app store, but I went to Halo and asked them, do they have a Microsoft Teams app? And they did, and they gave me a file, and it was really easy to get that uploaded into Microsoft Teams here. And the way you do that is at the bottom, you've got manage your apps, and you have got upload an app. So we've got an app that you can upload to your organization's app catalog, or if you're not an admin, you can submit an app to your organization for approval. So you click on one of these options and you simply upload the file, easy. Now there's a lot of different ways to add apps. You don't have to come into apps here. You can go directly into your Microsoft team or chat to add the app. And I'm gonna show you that for Microsoft Planner. So if I come into my IT support team again, you can see here that I've already got a Microsoft Planner app at the top here, but I'm gonna create a new one. I can click plus here to add a tab. So some of my favorites are document library. So a document library is a really useful one. Microsoft SharePoint has something called a document library, which is a top level folder on a SharePoint site. If you want to add a few different folders to a team, you don't need to add a channel in Microsoft Teams for each of those folders. You can just come in here and click on document library and add that document library to your Microsoft team. So let's come back in here. We can also add a SharePoint page. So if you want to add your team's SharePoint page here, um, I can add that and it will create a tab where they can open the SharePoint site um, or we have got Microsoft Planner. So I click on Planner here, it's going to set up my Planner tab and it will give me the option to create a new Microsoft Planner board or add an existing Microsoft Planner. So we come back into this one that I'm already using in here. It's a great way of managing tasks within a team or a project and collaborating. You can really easily drag and drop tasks between different columns, tick them off when they're done, or click on them to add notes or checklist items. You can also assign them to people, set a priority, or set recurring tasks. I have done another video which goes into this in a lot more detail. The next one I want to talk to you about is polls. Polls are a fantastic way to collaborate and get people engaged in Microsoft Teams. Rather than just sending a boring message to everybody saying, what do you think about this? And posting that, people are less likely to engage with that because it means they have to type a message to respond to it. It's difficult for you to see any metrics on what different people think. And some people don't like speaking out in front of the whole team. So rather than doing that, let's delete this message Let's click on delete and start a new post. And I'm going to click plus and get more apps again. And I'm going to add a poll. Here we go. So I want to ask everyone, what do they think? What do you think about getting rid of the coffee machine and replacing it with a smoothie maker? Option one, love it. Option two, hate it. And the last one, don't care. We're not gonna allow people to select multiple options. So do we want to record the names of respondents? Don't really need to do that in this case. And do we want everyone to be able to see the results? Yes, I do, because when someone complains that they didn't get their way with this change, we can say, well, hang on, everybody else voted this way. So I'm gonna click preview, and this is what it's gonna look like to everybody. I can go back and edit that or I can press send. Okay, so here is my poll. I can submit my own vote and I'm gonna click on hate it because I need my coffee in the morning. Okay, and we can see so far that we've had one response and 100% of people hate it. The fourth thing that I'm gonna show you today is how to schedule a message in Microsoft Teams. And this is also something that you can do in Microsoft Outlook. So why would you want to schedule a message in Microsoft Teams? Well, in this particular example, let's say that tomorrow I'm on holiday 
And I want to remind people in the morning to remember to look at our triage queue in our help desk. I can schedule my message so that it sends first thing in the morning because I send it at night just before I go away. By the time the morning comes, a lot of people are going to have forgotten that I sent it. So let's have a look at how we do that. So I'm going to click on start a post. And at the bottom here, if I click on plus, I can then click on schedule message. So I can set this to go for tomorrow and let's go for 8.30 and click on continue. So at the top here, I can see this post is going to be delivered tomorrow at 8.30. Okay, and if I click on post, I can see the message there and I can see that it's going to send on Friday the 16th at 8.30. If I've changed my mind or I want to edit this, I can just click on the pencil icon to edit it. Or if I don't want to send that anymore, I can click on the three dots and click on delete. The fifth and final hidden feature that I'm going to show you today is slash commands in Microsoft Teams. Hardly anyone that I speak to knows about this feature, and it's a great way to do certain actions in Microsoft Teams really quickly without going through the menus. Let's have a look. So if I click on start post anywhere in Microsoft Teams and I enter a forward slash, I then got the list of slash commands that I can use. So I can use this to change my team status. I So let's say I want to set my status to do not disturb. Really useful for me when I'm recording a video. There we go. And it set my status to do not disturb. So it hasn't sent a message in this team. It doesn't really matter what team or what chat I do that in because it's not going to send a message. And when I'm finished, I can click on backslash and set my status again to available. And straight away, that has changed my status, as you can see at the top there, to available. I can also click on backslash and go to apps. So I've showed you a few different apps today that you can add. Rather than clicking on plus and clicking on apps, you can just click on backslash and then apps and then click on your approvals request. You can also enter backslash and just type what you need. You don't have to search for it in the list. So if you know what you're looking for, I can type in backslash DND to change my status to do not disturb or backslash apps and that's going to bring up my apps and then I can click on my app to add it. So let's click on polls. I can create a new poll and that saved me having to click into plus, click on get more apps and search for what I'm looking for. It's only a couple of clicks, but all of this time adds up. So it's pretty useful. You can also open settings there. So if you've got this typical issue where you've plugged in your headset in a Teams meeting, and you can't remember where the audio settings are, you can open it using the backslash menu. 